What is up? This is Afif. I'm here with Dylan from Full of Hell. What's up, man? <laughs> I'm sorry. I have to get to do, do, this, do it this way. Um, so first off, where did the where did you get the name Full of Hell from? Uh, we're really influenced by like the '90s era of death metal, especially out of Sweden. So we, it's an entombed Sweden, song. Sweden, Svenska. <laughs> yeah, it's an entombed song. Entombed. Oh yeah, yeah entombed. So it's cool, kind of like cool, a nod cool. to the to those guys. So you have Swedish words in your lyrics, right? Yeah, I mean, I use like I, I use whatever words sound good to me. So we have German and Swedish. And I'll probably do some. The other sound things. of God. Where, where did you Where did you get that from? Legend of God means. Um, that was. I mean, I was just. Uh, I don't remember what tip I was on when I was thinking about that. I was just trying <laughs> to like. Imagine like, worshiping sound, and like thinking of like. I don't know, man. You know, I did shrooms once, and I, and I was listening to the whole album. It's fucking chaotic. Nice. <laughs> okay, what's next? Um, all right, let's do a fun question. What do you think about the crowd in Malaysia? It's from Wonderful, awesome, from fucking energetic, dedicated, sick motherfuckers. Everybody is really cool. So I've been watching your full set lives, and I realize you have this, like, a, a BJ technique you do when you scream. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I saw some guys doing that when I was a kid. It like gives like a cool shutter effect, just like wah 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 wah, kind of. Cool, cool. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. What, what, what else is there? So, about the band. Um, how long has it been since you guys started? Uh, we started the band in 2009, and I actually wasn't even in the band when it, when our guitar player first started it. Okay. And then I joined like a few months after they started this. Few months. So was the name um, already named? It was or? always full of hell. It was always full of yeah. from from before you. Yeah. So you've been you've been in the band pretty early, right? Yeah. Every every physical release I've been on. So from uh, the demo on. Um, there are fundamental beliefs in your band that shapes your the the way you stay together, the sound. What would it be? You know, just. Uh, I mean, Spencer and I kind of run the band, and basically, we get no, no greater happiness than performing live and making our music so we basically just like put that as the top priority and uh, I don't know <laughs> yeah I, I mean oh yeah one more thing I heard in Korea your your was it your guitarist who had a panic attack he's, he's got a fear of flying oh so uh, he couldn't do the Southeast Asian tour he, yeah he, he tried but he just couldn't do all the flights that's, that's kind of sad yeah it sucks he's really bummed um, okay. Better off though. <laughs> so, what a, what other lifestyle choices do you have? Like, veganism or? I'm straight edge. You're straight edge? Always been. Are you, know. you, have you ever done drugs before or? Nope. You've never been nope. high? And, and our guitar player is straight edge as well. Cool. But then the bassist and drummer get high all the time. <laughs> so we have a good mix. And the bassist and drummer though are vegetarian. So, All right. So, so we have some different beliefs. What's your perspective on that? You know, uh, the whole I thing. actually really kind of believe in it, but um, I'm too much of a child to uh, abstain from eating meat. Uh, I don't really have a good excuse. So, <laughs> as far as like my actions are concerned, outside of like obviously being like so careless and lazy that I eat meat, uh, I mean it's kind of conducive to that lifestyle. I should, I should. I should be vegetarian for, for all intents and purposes, but I don't know. So I'm a coward. <laughs> this this new thing you're doing with the body, you you have a thing with collaborating with noise artists, right? Sort of. We just collaborate. We were only ever going to really collaborate with Mersbell. We didn't have a plan to do any more collaborations. But the body is my favorite band. And everybody else loves them. They're fucking so like when the, thriller music. Yeah, when the body asked us, we couldn't say no. <laughs> I'm glad because it turned out really great. Actually, is that on the EP or is it like a, a full length? The body thing? Yeah. It's a full album. Cool. Yeah. That's gonna be sick. Yeah, it turned out so fucking cool. It's got like everything. Who, who does your art? I mean, I can see the relevance between the art and your... Tons of people. I did the first two LPs myself. And you, then, you drew it yourself? Yeah, and then Mark McCoy, this really great artist, did the Merzbell collaboration. And as far as the t-shirts go, like, I have so many friends. I can, I can get a sort of like a spiritual sense from your 
the roots of earth is consuming my home. Yeah. And I and I saw the art. It was like a like kind of a house in a planet getting. Yeah, cold. I mean that one's more literal and like. I guess more like down to earth as far as concept goes. I think it's gotten more spiritual in, as the albums go along, if anything. I can uh, definitely sense the spirituality in your in your writing. And do you have like any views like religious or? Um, um, I mean, morally, I guess NLP. you could say I have like maybe some like basic Christian morals. Like I'm anti-violence, and like, <laughs> you know I don't believe in killing, and you know, but I. I honestly, I respect my friends that are Christian, but I personally, inside, I fucking hate Christianity. And <laughs> what about I actually like, hate organized religion, period. What about occultism or, you know, chaos? I think it's all fucking stupid. <laughs> uh, I mean, but I, I'll keep my mouth shut because, uh, you know, if I have a, a Muslim or a Christian friend or like a Buddhist friend, well, the Buddhism is actually... You know, it's a long discussion. Buddhism is the one I would probably respect the most, but a lot of times with this theology, I. I find it, I think it's like beautiful reading about it, but I mean, I also think it's like, it's just... I think you're more of a spiritual a person. I'm like, I'm like, I like to think of myself as just like inwardly spiritual, not guided by any organized religion. That's sick. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I fucking hate organized religion. <laughs> I just, I also respect my friends, so I do have religious friends, and I don't push them around, but you know. I think it's unspoken. Just don't be an ass, right? Exactly. That's my main tenant. It's like, you know, it bumps me out how awful people are to each other. Yeah. So I just keep my mouth shut. Do you like take heed of um, current global events? Yeah, as, of course. I mean, as much as anyone else. What's on top of your mind or on top of your list or top stories? Um, Politics. Anything. There's so much chaos in the world right now from, from my point of view. Yeah, I mean... It's really hard to pinpoint. I mean, I, I think what's on my mind, what, what I'm getting inundated with a lot, just because I'm American, is like uh, a lot of white police officers are finally getting called on uh, the mistreatment oh, yeah, of, that. of minorities in America, yeah, people of color, just like, which has been a, a fucking thing since the Black country Clark's was founded, matter. man. <laughs> so uh, it's, it's interesting to see like people actually doing something about it. It's cool. But yeah, I mean, the police are fucked everywhere. <laughs> and and I and I read a lot about uh, the the venue in KL. Oh yeah, Rumapi got August. rushed. And, yeah. Uh, there's some political intent behind and it. Like 160 people. Yeah, I heard there was going to be a demonstration on the weekend. Yeah. And they were all afraid that all the punks at Rumapi were going to go to that. Yeah. So they just came and arrested all of them, put them in jail for like three days. So what do you do in your leisure time? I mean, what are your like top hobbies? To be honest, uh, I don't really do much of anything except this band. It's like my hugest focus. But uh, I do have a fiance, and That's sick. we did just buy a house in the woods right before I left, which is crazy. And uh, I read a lot, and I like video games, and <laughs> I write occasionally. I guess. I'm just gonna take a wild guess. Do you play like uh, RPG games? Yes. Final Fantasy. So much. No. Final Fantasy series is like top for me. Absolute yeah. number one. Yeah. I can tell it from your writing and stuff. Yeah. So that's awesome. I'm obsessed. I almost have Final Fantasy named songs. I love the Merge Belt artwork. It's like a galaxy and there's the human limb yeah. turning into a cosmos, whatever they call it. So, what, what 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 makes you write about art? I mean, how is it relevant to you? Write about art? I, I mean war. My bad. Write about war. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I'm just like, I feel like a very empathetic person, like maybe overwhelmingly so. So, I mean, obviously, like, human atrocity bothers me and kind of disturbs me. And war is <laughs> man's greatest act of atrocity against itself. Yeah. So, yeah, it's fascinating. So, you told me that you didn't really realize that people pay attention to lyrics in music. Honestly, I, I think Grindcore is the, the most poetic genre so far. Sometimes. Dead in the Dirt, uh, Full of Hell. I've Dead in the Dirt was, was, for sure. Fucking nuts. But I, a lot of traditional grind is not. And a lot of death metal, like, <laughs> the lyrics are always good, but to be honest, in extreme metal, the lyrics are often just a placeholder. Like the vocals, you know, it's so indecipherable. And most people don't look into it. So it's cool when someone does. Your, your lyrics are fucking awesome, fucking ace, Thanks, man. in my opinion. Um, 
now that you know that some people who do pay attention to lyrics, I've heard comments saying you're a polit, a po, what's that, a polit, a political, a political, ah, oh, whatever, <laughs> oh man. So, um, what would you like to, you know, tell the viewers out there, or, you know, the the ones who actually really care about your art and more than just a uh, fan base thing? I mean, I'm for I'm for respect of life. That's what that's what we believe in, respect of life, and you know, like. I don't know, human and animal rights and individual freedoms. Do, do but you have a pet? Full of hell's not political. Do you have a pet? Yeah, my girlfriend's got a couple cats and she just got a puppy. But uh, I mean, <laughs> I've sick. had animals all my life, but uh, full, full of hell is not a political band per se. It's definitely apolitical. You know, from my personal view, I think you're one of the most theatrical or expressive vocalists on stage. Thanks. I like your, um, your moves and all. Where, where do they come from? Lots of different singers. <laughs> Uh, bands that I loved when I was a kid. So it's not. And it's then my own. It's not a huge crime to copy, is it? You know, like huh? it, it's not. It's not a huge crime to learn from others, right? No, absolutely not. I mean, everybody's influenced by something. I, I was really influenced by the singer Daughters. Daughters. He was kind of a wild man. I mean, I, I don't know. Everybody, man. I could name like I could name like a bunch of vocalists that are crazy that like I take little nods from, and I'm just like, <laughs> man, that looks cool. Over the years, I've just like. And some of the stuff, I've, I don't really see a lot of other people doing. Maybe, maybe it's my thing, I don't know. But I just try to like go hard, like with my whole body. When, but I, not every show. I don't want it to be like put on. So only when I'm really feeling it. So you have to feel it, yeah. Do you pay attention to critics? Like. Yeah, unfortunately. Do you, do you take them seriously? I mean, some of them, they, they give oh. shitty comments like, these guys used to work with Code Orange, which is why they're blah blah. I don't know. It's, it's like uh, stupid. That's stuff I mostly laugh at. It depends. I mean, <laughs> if it's honestly, I don't give a fuck anymore. But like last year when we did the Merzbow thing, it was pretty high profile, and I had to like tolerate like a couple bad reviews that were saying like we didn't do it right. But to be perfectly honest, like, I mean, it hurts when you put so much of yourself into something and you get like. You feel like you're being attacked when that, something like that comes out, because you put all of yourself into it, and you're not trying to like piss people off by making it. You're just making it because you wanted to make it. But now I see the truth. Like most critics are just fucking stupid monkeys behind keyboards. <laughs> True. So I don't respect them. And to this, I don't give a fuck about them. And but it wasn't always that way. And I I do read the reviews. So yeah. I I read a lot of your. Your interviews. There's one where you said your parents were into hardcore punk, and that's where you got the punk music. Yeah. 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 They gave me all my punk CDs, that's and then they got disappointed when I dropped out of college. You dropped out of college? Uh, what? Yeah, to do the band. Wow. What were you doing in college? I mean, of course. Fuck, man. That's the same as me. Stupid. Shit. What a fucking coincidence. But yeah, man. This is like we're Sally. Not, we're not writing music for fucking music. Critics. Yeah. True. I gotta quit my band because the guy was like, "Hey, dude, write thrash metal lyrics about drinking and having fun with friends." I'm like, "No, okay." <laughs> I hate that shit. <laughs> I can't do that. I'm like, I gotta write something from the heart, or you know, be honest at least. At home, do you have like a like a job, or you know, like I know for for one for one code orange, they're like, they just got regular jobs, and the band is the real thing. Yeah, they code orange is lucky. They live in a, they live in the city Pittsburgh, and like there's a music scene there. And we, we have this mutual friend who like runs this venue. Yeah. So I think those guys like a lot of times they get to like pick up shifts like loading big shows at this venue. It's pretty fucking sick. Um, those guys work when they can. We do the same thing. Uh, I actually work at a movie theater. Get this really good job. It's the shittiest pay. It's like you know a nothing of a job, but they let me go on tour. So it like helps grease the wheels. Um, this 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 place I got with my girlfriend has a lot of land. Might start. Uh, Sounds funny, but like might start farming next year. It's actually very traditional, very grow, grow writer. Berry. I'm gonna grow berries. <laughs> Try to get organic. That's very American, ride. actually. <laughs> There's a lot of uh, organic markets in my area. It's like a pretty cool. hip, hip area, so I'm gonna start selling berries. But yeah, the two two younger guys. Uh, one guy makes donuts. The other guy <laughs> the other guy cooks in a kitchen. Okay, that's and then cool. And our guitar player that's not here, he works construction. His, and oh. the funniest part is his last name is Hazard. That's and it's his dad's construction company, and it's called Hazard Construction, which is, it seems... <laughs> kind of ironic. Very. <laughs> yeah, so, we all work as much as we can when we're home. For bands that are trying to break out, you know, what's the, 
you know, the big tip, the big breakthrough thing for them to do, uh, do you think? I mean, realize that it's going to take years and you're never going to feel like you made it at all. Or There's like no made it point. You think there's like some kind of like point where you're like, you look around and you're like, holy shit, we did it. But it literally never feels that way. And you have to, unless you're like fucking lucky, you're going to have to work for years at it. And like, you better be doing it just because you love to do it and you better appreciate every level that you're at while you're at it or it's not worth it like it's not about like the fucking end, end goal it's about uh, enjoying like what you're doing it's just like um, being better than you were yesterday and shit the like journey that journey is the destination <laughs> so now that you mentioned that have you ever been in, a, in, a, in another band before this and yeah but no bands that matter to mention like no bands that put out records or this is my first serious band, and it sounds like the music I wanted to play since I was a little, like, young, like, kid just discovering grindcore. So, so, um, what is what is on your playlist right now? Just uh, random bands. Let's take a look. I got a bunch of emo from my buddy who likes emo music. That's kind of weird for me. Emo? But, yeah, this band called Always. It's fucking awesome. Really strong girl vocals. Group uh, I, I like Joanna Newsom. Yeah, <laughs> always in my playlist. I got Howlin' Wolf. It's not that good to see it. Oh, Gor Gorgoroth. Just, I can list it. Gorgoroth. Godspeed you Black Emperor, always. This band Gas Chamber. Perfect. Uh, Death Grips. Yeah, Guilty Pleasure. You know, Coxbar. I got Cannibal Corpse on here. Bone All. Bunch of all the, the body, body. All the body records. The Body Full of Hell collab. <laughs> uh, wow. Ascension. Insect Warfare, Innumerable Forms, Leviathan, Piss Grave, Portal, I don't know, the list goes on. Lately, old Cannibal Corpse albums have been influencing our guitar player. <laughs> so there's, there's like a formula, you know, like, I heard Code Orange, they did, they kind of looked to Beneath the Ruins, who did that? It's a thrash metal band that did Beneath the Ruins. Sepultura, they listened to a lot of Sepultura and then you know, I mean, we definitely listen to some Sepultura, but I wouldn't say it has, I don't know. So what do you think about that formula? You know, like, they're, they're kind of pulling out something from the old and turning it into something new, or? Oh, well, everybody does that. I mean, that's that's what you do. Like, rock music is fucking boring ass. It's like <laughs> fucking guitar, bass, drums. <laughs> metal, metal regurgitates itself. And so, to, especially punk and especially hardcore. It's the same fucking shit. They take a little bit of this and a little bit of that and they draw it into their punk formula. So yeah, I mean it's cool. I don't know. Right now it's it's like still really popular for hardcore bands to like take a little bit of the dumb the dumb riffs from death metal and like put it into their music, but play it half-assed. So, yeah, <laughs> I guess you could say we do that. We're like trying to play like a blend of death metal, grindcore, and maybe like something like industrial and noise into like a punk format. Cool. Like, like a hardcore kind of format. You, you guys have DIY ethics, right? For sure. For sure. But. You know, what are your thoughts about playing like big shows? Like we always fasts? do. We do. We, you do any kind of. We're DIY, kind of but like we're we're fucking like smart about it. I'm not saying we're like. I really respect a band that keeps it like 100% DIY forever, but we do have a booking agent. I book like half of our tours, and I let the dude like look for like bigger. We're doing a metal tour in January, like in fucking bigger hell. venues. We do. What we we just do what we want. I don't really give a fuck what people think. <laughs> so. Yeah, you just do what works, right? Yeah, well, but we are very hands-on and we're very DIY. So, do you have like any new videos yet for, I, I think the latest one there's was... A, there's a guy working on videos for the Body Collab. Okay, that's, say, that's something to look forward to. Anything else should people should look forward to with the Body Collab? Uh, I mean, it's... We've got I'm a like, video. I'm like so, so proud of it. I don't know. I don't know how to... Just everything? I don't know. Look <laughs> to the record. Also, we're doing a split 7-inch next year with like a really, really fucking cool band. I can't wait, but I can't say anything. Okay, that's, that's gonna be a secret. But I, I gotta go soon. Alright. Yeah. Anything else? I guess that's it. Cool, that's a wrap. That's enough.